This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video we're going to be showing you how to make a companionway cover and this companionway cover will have a screen that has a flap that covers it. You could also put a vinyl window material in its place. To demonstrate how it's made, here's Angela from the Sailrite Loft. First thing we need to do is take some measurements of the hatch opening. Here you can see Angela taking a few measurements of this hatch opening. On paper she'll write down each one of those measurements with a rough sketch of what the hatch opening looks like. We'll show this in a little bit more detail here in a few seconds. Using a yardstick we'll lay it on top of the side framing and then we'll take a measurement straight down the center all the way down to where we want the companionway cover to end at the bottom. Our companionway cover will be designed to snap on the inside of the hatch cover, so we're going to take a few measurements here along the curved hatch cover to determine the curve of the top of the companionway cover. Write all those measurements down on paper. Now let's show this in a little bit more detail with these illustrations. We're using the extreme edges of the teak frame as a measuring guide and here you can see all the measurements that are required to come up with your cover pattern. At the bottom of this companionway we do not have a teak frame so we're just ending the measurement at a particular spot in the fiberglass there. Once you have all those measurements we'll be adding two inches around the entire perimeter for a double hem. We'll take the vertical measurement including D and E and add 2 inches for the top and 2 inches for the bottom. And then we'll take the C measurement and add 2 inches for each of the sides. This will make our double hem around the entire perimeter. Now that we have those measurements we can draw out a rectangle similar to this. Here Angela is marking the fabric with a soapstone pencil. This is the rectangle for our particular companionway cover. There's an extra line in here that's not necessary. Now she cuts it out with scissors. No reason to use a hot knife because it's going to be double hemmed and we still are not finished patterning. Next we'll fold the rectangle in half vertically. And we'll create a crease so that we can determine where the center is. Next we'll take the horizontal measurement at the bottom and we'll add two plus two equaling four more inches and that'll be the bottom width. We'll use that total calculation and we'll center it between the center line where we created the crease. Once that's done we'll concentrate on the arch at the top. We have a measurement that already has two inches added on for the double hem. We'll take the sum of that and place a straight line at that location all across the top of the rectangle. So here she's marking down that sum and then she uses a straight edge and strikes a line down. Now just to be assured that our measurement is right we're going to take that width measurement at the top plus the four inches, the sum of that, here's the center, and make sure that our rectangle is the right width. And it looks like it is perfect for us. Next from the line we struck down from the top we're going to create a diagonal line on both sides. That's the A measurement. We'll use a straight edge from the line we struck down all the way to the line or the mark at the bottom. And we'll do that on both sides. Ignore that line that's already struck down on this side that Angela's working on now. Next we'll cut it out with scissors. No reason to use a hot knife because these edges will have a double hem. Be sure to only cut on the two angled lines on the sides, not that top line we struck down. To create the arch, we'll measure up along that line we struck down at the top, our E measurement, our F measurement, and our G measurement. Angela's decided not to add the two inches for each one of those measurements. However, that would be easier. She's going to have to strike lines again two inches above the line she's striking now to create the arch. So you can do it either way. Now she's going to freehand an arch matching up with those lines. She'll need to do the same thing again two inches above this point. Okay, now she's going to measure up two inches again and repeat the procedure. Notice that we are not marking the opposite side of the arch. We'll uh, fold this in half and cut along this uh, line and then we'll use that new cut line to create the arch on the other side so the arch will be the same. No, 
Angela has created a cut at that arch, the half arch, I should say. She folds it in half, and now she'll create or cut the second half of the arch. Okay, there is one slight advantage to creating that line two inches down underneath that arch. She's going to fold the material in half and she's going to press on the material right where that line was struck down on the other half to transfer that line to the opposite half. That way she can use the line as a reference for the double hem. There it is. It magically appeared. She's going to reinforce it just by drawing straight on top of it. To make it a little bit easier for the two inch hem around the entire perimeter, she's going to mark over two inches and strike a line all around the uh, other three sides. Next we'll use the double sided tape for canvas and we'll baste it on all of the sides of our canopy hatch. Peel off the transfer paper revealing the double sided tape. To create our first fold we'll just fold it over to the line that we struck down two inches in and then we'll do that all around the perimeter following that same procedure. When you create a hem on an arched edge you will have to accept a few wrinkles in the hem. Obviously the fabric has to shrink there and it's a good idea to distribute the wrinkles so that they are less obvious. So we'll put quite a few wrinkles in this hem uh, and distribute them so that they are less pronounced. Once we have the single hem around the entire perimeter, we'll apply double sided tape again around the entire perimeter and then create the double hem. If you find that your double sided tape is not sticking well, you can use a flat object like a putty knife and apply a good crease in the double hem and that helps to hold the basting tape tight. So that's an option. Here at the top you can see there are some wrinkles. That is normal because of the arch. We'll be sewing this cover with the Sailrite 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system and we're going to use the deluxe magnetic guide as a fence like a fence on a table saw and we'll sew around the entire perimeter approximately an eighth inch from the edge of the fabric. We'll do that on the outside of this double hem and then we'll also be doing it to the inside of the double hem. And here at the top there are some wrinkles and notice they are distributed fairly well. If you don't have Sayerite's Deluxe Magnetic Guide you could use masking tape and just try to keep the fabric up against the masking tape so just tape it to the bed of the sewing machine and use that as your guide. However, the magnetic guides sold from Sayerite really make your work a lot more fun and more accurate. Notice that when Angela gets to the corner she will bury her needle, lift her foot and pivot on that needle. That way she doesn't lose her position and she can just sew down the other side without having to reverse to lock the stitch in place. Now she'll sew the inner uh, straight stitch by moving the magnetic guide to reposition it and then sew around the inner perimeter of that double hem. The stitch should be a straight stitch and it should be at least a six millimeter stitch length. The shorter the stitch length, the more puckering your project will have. Uh, because we're using the Serat 111 sewing machine, it looks like we're sewing about a seven millimeter straight stitch here. And again, she's gonna bury the needle, rotate the fabric. We wanna show the part where the arch is because this is where those wrinkles are. And if she notices any wrinkles that are fairly obvious, she will take some time to distribute them, but you can see she's sewing in most of the wrinkles. If you want to be particular, you could actually help distribute those wrinkles a little bit more uh, throughout the length of this double hem. It's not that crucial because this is the inside, not the outside surface. We're sewing this project with the Tanara thread, which is a lifetime guaranteed thread. It does not rot and it does not fade. This is a clear colored Tanara. And you could also choose the Helios brand, which again is a lifetime guaranteed thread. They are more expensive and they're harder to sew with. Typically, most of our customers choose to use a V92 polyester, which is a UV resistant thread. It is not UV proof, like Tanara or Helios. Polyester threads are easier to sew with and less expensive.
The double hem is now sewn around the entire perimeter. We've chosen to install a mesh uh, Pfeiffertex material for a screen. However, you could install a vinyl window material if you choose. The process is exactly the same, so it's your choice. We've chosen to use a Pfeiffertex mesh material. This is a vinyl mesh fabric and we're going to place the ruler on top of that stitch line. That's the inner stitch line for the double hem. This ruler is two inches wide, so we're placing a um, line, or striking a line that is two inches away from that stitch line using the yellow grease pencil. You'll notice that we've positioned the screen material up from the bottom approximately five inches or so. There is no hard fast rule on how large the uh, screen opening or window opening needs to be. So play around with it and make it whatever, uh, op whatever size you want. And we're starting this mesh material around six inches from the uh, curve at the top of this cover. Once the line has been struck, we'll use scissors and cut out the Pfeiffertex mesh material. Next, we'll apply the double-sided tape for canvas all around the perimeter of this mesh material. If you use vinyl, window material, you do the same thing. Angela has placed the mesh material on top of the canvas on the underside. You'll notice the hems are facing up and she peels off the transfer paper revealing the glue and then bastes the uh, vinyl window or vinyl mesh in place. Now she'll sew the outer perimeter of this Pfeiffertex mesh about a sixteenth inch away from the edge. You would do the same thing if using vinyl window material. At the corner, she's determined she's a little bit too far from the corner, so she's going to roll the balance wheel by hand to, and push on the reverse lever to position the needle in the best position and then continue sewing on the other side. Now it's sewn all around the perimeter and this is the outside surface. She's going to use a seam ripper and create a slit in the umbrella material, not the vinyl mesh and not the vinyl window material if you've chosen to use that. And this slit should be approximately a quarter inch from the stitch line. Now that we've created a slit with the seam ripper, we can insert scissors now and cut carefully a quarter inch from the seam line. The reason we need to carefully cut is we'll be using this canvas as the roll-up flap. So cut it straight and carefully. We're going to cut the two sides and the bottom. We are not going to cut at the top. We're going to stop short about a quarter inch from that seam line that secures the mesh along the top. Now the canvas that we cut laid open will install or place a double sided tape along the inside perimeter of the first stitch line that we sewed down to hold the vinyl mesh or vinyl window material in place all around the two sides and the bottom edge. Peel off the transfer paper revealing the glue and now we'll place a one inch wide velcro. This is the hook velcro. We will place the velcro so that the cut that we just made to the canvas is almost in the center of the velcro. So the velcro hides the stitch and the double sided tape that is peeping through. Angela will make a rough cut here, it's a little bit long, and then she'll trim it when she's installed the bottom portion here so that it is flush with the opposite. Uh, side velcro and she's going to make it flush here with the bottom of that velcro so it's a nice look. And then she'll trim the uh, top where the uh, canvas has been laid back so that it is almost even with that slit where the slit stopped. We'll take it back over to the Sayre at 111 with the MCSER power system and we'll sew the outer edge of the velcro all along its uh, length on the sides, the bottom, and the opposite side. When we get to the corner, we'll bury the needle, lift the foot slightly, rotate the fabric, lower the foot, and continue to sew.
Once that's done, you'll need to sew the inner perimeter just the same. We will not show all of that. Now that the Velcro, the hook Velcro is sewn in place, we'll concentrate on the flap. We're going to apply a double-sided tape all around the perimeter of the flap so that it's almost uh, completely against the edge of the canvas. We'll peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and we'll baste a one-inch binding around the three sides. We want the binding to be basted in place so that it conceals both the double-sided tape and also the Velcro. Angela is marking where she wants to cut that binding, and then she's going to use the Sailrite Edge hot knife to cut the binding. The hot knife will help to seal the uh, Sunbrella fabric so it does not unravel. If you don't have a professional hot knife like this, you could use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. We'll do that to all three sides. And then once it's basted down, we'll use that hot knife to trim the uh, two edges or corners. We've placed a ruler on the bottom side to prevent damage to the canvas underneath. And here at the top where the canvas folds back, we'll trim it so it looks nice with the Sailrite Edge Hot Knife as well. Next, we'll flip the panel back and apply double-sided tape to the underside as well. Here we're going to be basting the looped Velcro. The looped Velcro will be run along the edge of the uh, flap. And if you remember right, we placed binding on that edge, so the Velcro is almost flush with the edge of the binding. At the corners, she trims the uh, Velcro so that it looks good and is flush. Now we'll sew the uh, Velcro in place and also the binding in place. We'll start by sewing the outside edge of the Velcro. We'll reverse here at the beginning to lock the stitch in place and then sew around this side, the bottom, and the opposite side. We're not going to show all of this. When we're done with that, then we'll flip the panel around and we'll sew the inner perimeter using the binding as a guide there. So we flip the panel, now the binding is facing up, and we'll sew the inner perimeter. Angela's going to use the deluxe magnetic guide to keep her stitch straight, but you can also just use the edge of the binding and guide it into the foot so that it stays straight that way too, just by eye. We're going to take a length of our binding and we're going to place another length of binding on the other underside and sew them together to create a roll-up strap. So we'll sew down both sides of this two-layer assembly of binding. This is a one-inch binding. We'll unvelcro our canvas flap and place that binding roll-up strap we just created in the center of it and push it up into the assembly. We'll hold that strap in place and take it to the sewing machine and sew approximately a half inch away from that primary stitch that secured the uh, mesh in place to the canvas. We'll reverse here at the beginning to lock the stitch in place and then we'll sew over top of that strap, securing it in place, all the way to the other end. Notice that Angela sews over top of the binding uh, to secure it, and then she's also going to sew over top of it with that first stitch that uh, she put on to secure the uh, mesh in place. If you're not happy with the excess binding hanging over the end here, place a ruler underneath it, neath it to protect the canvas, and then use that hot knife to trim it to size. If you don't have the Sailrite Professional edge hot knife, you can use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun as well.
since a snap is going to be installed in the canvas and there's only one layer of some umbrella, we need to reinforce the snap area. We're going to use a round vinyl disc that we've cut and we're going to push it through the mandrel of the snap right system. Notice the eyelet has already been installed onto the snap right eyelet die. Then we're going to take a stud and install it in the snap right stud die and we're going to use a standard riveting tool and uh, install that snap. To do that, we'll push the mandrel through the canvas in the position that we want it placed, and then we'll take the uh, stud that's been installed in the snap right stud uh, die and position it over the mandrel and depress the lever of the standard riveting tool until the fastener is installed appropriately. There's no reason for the mandrel to break, though if it does break, it's quite all right. Pull the uh, rivet tool off and then your stud and the eyelet is installed in the canvas. And because we used a vinyl reinforcing patch, it's a little bit more reinforced than just going through a single layer of umbrella. Roll up the canvas flap and now we'll put a snap on the end of the roll up strap that we made out of binding. Again, we're going to use the snap right system to install the button and the socket. There are other tools that can be used to install snaps, so be sure to check out Sarah's website. But for this application, we're going to use a snap right button. And the snap right button has a hole in the top. That hole has to allow the mandrel to protrude through. Now we'll place the uh, socket onto the socket die and then we'll snap the socket die onto the stud that we previously installed. We'll push the strap uh, so that the mandrel protrudes through the strap in the appropriate position that we want that button and socket installed. And then we'll just simply use the riveting tool and, uh, and crimp it uh, in place so that the button is installed on the roll-up strap. Just to press the riveting tool until you have a firm action. That usually will confirm that the fastener has been installed uh, appropriately. The mandrel does not necessarily need to break. And there we go, it's installed. We have decided not to use too many snaps for our companionway cover. We've installed one here and we're installing one here. This is just a, a stud with a wood screw already installed in it. We screwed it in place and we're going to use the snap right system again and install the socket and the button using the snap right system. There are other methods to install snaps as mentioned previously so if you don't have this don't worry about it. You can do it other ways. Then we're going to position the canvas in the appropriate position that we want it. We're going to push the mandrel through the canvas and then we're going to install a snap there as well. We'll do that at each of the corners, though it can be done in more places than just that if you choose. And that will uh, secure our companion weight cover to our hatch trim. Nicely done. Let's take a look at the inside of the barrel and it's rolled over beautifully. Now we'll just do that at each location that we've installed a stud to the trim. Nice thing about using the snap right system is it's used as a positioning tool. Notice here that we need to make the canvas rather taut and so Angela is determining where the hole should be pushed through the other side because the fastener on the other side is already snapped and we'll push the mandrel through at that location. If we're not happy, we can reposition it before installing the button to the top. And then she installs this one as well, just as we did previously.
Our hatch cover is made of fiberglass and it's not too thick, so if we used a screw stud, it would likely protrude through the other side of the hatch cover. Not good. So we're going to use a YKK SNAD instead, which is an adhesive stud. They work great. Let's show you how it's used. We designed our companionway cover so that it would snap from the inside onto the back of the hatch cover. Well, first we're going to clean the areas where we're going to install a stud with an alcohol prep pad. We've opted to use the 3M Tape Primer 94 as an adhesive promoter. It's specially designed to help 3M tape stick and stay stuck. Sayerite sells the adhesive promoter in a half pint container. You can use a brush and dab it where you need it and then when you're done you can put the top back on the container and use it for another time. This adhesive promoter is not necessarily required for the YKK SNAD. However, it ensures that the 3M tapes on the SNAD will stick just about anywhere. We'll peel off the transfer paper on the back of the YKK SNAD to reveal the glue. We've chosen to use the YKK SNAD with the adhesive backed flexible base. This is great for curved surfaces like the edge of this hatch cover. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's directions for the installation of the YKK SNAD. Those instructions can be found at the Sarite website underneath the YKK SNAD product. Once the YKK SNAD is installed, we can install the button into the canvas. That's what we're doing next. And again, we're using the uh, SnapRite system from Sarite. Since this system has already been shown, we're going to skip this portion. Our companionway cover is now complete. You can see Angela rolling up the canvas flap here and snapping it in position. And in this clip, she's showing how to secure the canvas cover from the cockpit. She starts at the top at the hatch and then snaps down the wood trim on the sides. One of the many advantages of a companionway cover is that it can be used also to help protect the boards from the weather. Here Angela is installing the boards. And then she's going to snap up the companionway cover we just made and then she's going to pull the hatch over the top of it. This is a great way to keep your boards looking great and not have to varnish as much. Before we end this video, we want to show you one that we made at the loft table that was made from a 30 gauge plastic pane vinyl window material, so you have that option as well. As promised, here's the materials list that was used and also the tools that were used to build this companionway cover. For more free videos like this, check out the Sarah website or subscribe to the Sarah YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage, this Sarah, that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.